Hi folks and welcome back to Christmas in July. So today I'm making Christmas baubles. This was an idea that I saw on Pinterest um, and I've had a bit of a play around with her instructions and her measurements. I've changed them slightly um, and I'll explain to you why as we go through the tutorial. But I just really think it's a cute little bauble for the Christmas tree and I can change my baubles every year and not worry that uh, I haven't got the colours or the, um, the papers that I wanted. So anyway, so I've used one piece of cardstock from the Christmas design pads, which is from Wilco's. It's only £3, but I'm really stuck on this because I love the colours. I love the greys and the whites and the, um, the sort of the crispness of it. So using one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock, I've cut my pieces and I've been left over with that piece, which I can use in another project, as well as some off cuts. Now, what I'll use the off cuts for is to hole punch some circles that I'll be then using to form my rosettes. So that's a nice handy little bits because they're not very big but they're just perfect for the off cuts it doesn't have to be a circle you can just cut squares or or a piece of card it doesn't really matter um, because it will all be hidden so measurements so using that one piece and what you could do is have five different card stocks like in this one three or four different card stocks even and then cut them from different um different uh uh, pieces and then mix and match them together so you will need two pieces of card and always use double sided um, two pieces of card that are one inch by 12 inch um, we will be um, cutting off a piece later but it's just easier to keep it at 12 inch then we need two pieces that are one and a half inch by ten and a half inches and these two we will be attaching to each other like that to make one big piece because this piece will be your centre uh, piece in the bauble. These two will be each end but this one will be the middle. Now you can attach it now if you want and just overlap it by about half an inch but I'll show you an easier way of doing it. Um, and I just think it's, it's much easier to do it separate. <clears throat> and then you need four pieces. Now these all measure eight and a half inches by one and a quarter inches. So eight and a half by one and a quarter. And you want four of those and you will be joining those together as well to make two pieces. But I'm not going to do that just yet and I'll show you why as we go through the tutorial. So first thing you're going to do once you've cut all your pieces out is you're going to score them. Now I've resurrected my old hoogie board um, which was actually given to me by my old friend Dawn who uh, left me all of her crafting goodies when she, um, when she passed away and this is hers and I just really like using this with, when I'm doing my rosettes and I'll tell you for why because the hoogie board it's only every half inch if I look at my other boards my other board has a whole load of different quarter inches um, eighth of an inch all the way through and that can make scoring quite challenging whereas when I'm using my hoogie I'm just going down to the next one so if my blade fall what well, can't fall in the wrong channel because whichever channel I use, it's the right one. So I'm really um, glad that I held on to this uh, when Dawn um, passed it on to me. So all the way down, then I'm going to flip it over. I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to flip it that way. And I'm going to go back because when we concertina this, um, this card, we want some to fold one way and some to fold the other. So I'm just very quickly going down and you can go really quick with the hoogie board because it is that half inch all the way through. And I'm, like I said, I'm not worried that I'm scoring in the wrong channel. 
so there we go and because there's a lot of scoring in this because we're making five rosettes so there we go so that's all scored now I'll take my other one that matches let me just grab it which I've already scored so I've got the two of them all scored and then I'm just going to concertina fold them all the way like that okay now in the original um, and I'll put the link to the Pinterest um, uh, blog um, below so in the original one these were ten and a half now what happens if they're ten and a half is you get a valley this end and a valley that end so when I come to join them together they're not going to work very well <clears throat> so and then I'm going to concertina this one as well. Now, what we were going to do now is once we've concertinaed both of them, so I do them quite loosely at first, and then I sort of manipulate them between my fingers so that they're all sort of lined up. And once I'm happy that we're straight, that's when I'm squeezing down. Now, what happens with these is I'm now going to join them together and what I want to do is make sure that I've got both patterns the right way. So I'm going to just going to take some glue and because I've added that extra half an inch that can fall very naturally into there making a nice seal whereas before because they were both um, this one so because they were both valleys like that, when you join them together, you get either that going on, which I didn't like. So you've got that in the middle. Or if you join them the other way, you've got that on the outside. And I didn't like that because when you then do your rosette, it sticks up and doesn't look good. Well, I didn't think it looked good anyway. However, adding that extra half an inch means that they just slot in together that way. So I'm going to get my glue and I'm just going to pop some glue in there like that and just pop that over. And then I'm going to get a little peg because I'm using wet glue. You can use your hot glue for this if you want. I'm just going to pop that little peg on there and then I'm going to do the same this side. Just so that we get a full circle. So let's do that on that side, making sure that I'm doing the right side. I don't want to do them back to back. I want to make sure that it comes round. So I'm going to bring that over so that it nestles inside that, that valley, like that. And then I'm going to squeeze it together and then I'm going to get another little peg, actually a ball clip, and I'll pop that on there. And that will now hold it together until it dries. So once it's dried, because it stands open, I'm going to start training my paper. So I'm going to bring it all together and make sure it remembers all of those folds that I did. And then, once I'm happy, I'm going to start training it to fold flat like that. So, and it's the bigger it is, the easier it is. So when we start using the, the thinner ones, the little ones, that can be quite challenging. So... I like to train my papers as much as I can. So I'm holding it down and I'm just going around and reinforcing and pinching those, those folds so that I know that it goes there. Because once I start adding the hot glue, it gets very, very messy or can get very, very messy. So I'm going to go all the way around like that and then I'm going to find or not find let me just punch another hole another hole another circle because I can't see the one that I have prepared there we go 
So I've got my hot glue gun on. So I'm going to have that on standby. So I'm going to push it down. And once it's down, now you can do it one of two ways. Some people like to put the circle down, add the hot glue, pop that over, and then make try and make sure that you land right in the middle. The way I prefer to do it is a bit possibly more awkward, but let's give it a go. So I'm going to bring it down. I've got big hands and I don't have manual dexterity issues. That's so this will works better for me. If you do have manual dexterity issues, you might need something to support you or the first way is going to be the easier way. So I've got my glue gun and I'm going to make sure that I'm getting it right down that bit in the middle so that it catches on all of those um, edges there. So I'm pushing it back together and then I'm going to pop my circle back on and then I'm pushing it back together and with my other finger I'm just going to push down. It's still a bit warm but it's not too hot. There we go, now I know it's in the middle. And you can start to just releasing little bits to see if it's holding. Not quite cool enough yet. There we go, starting to cool down. There we go. Once we're happy that it's cool enough, I'm going to flip it over. And if I need to, I'm going to put some more glue there and my glue has leaked all the way through because I was a little bit over enthusiastic. Let's pop that in the bin. And I'm going to pop a little bit more glue down in that middle well, just so as it holds all of those pieces together. We've got a nice little bobble going on the top. Like that. I'm just going to hold it while it sticks. Okay. Now while it's... um cooling down what I would do next is I would once it's cool and I will leave it for for 10 15 maybe 20 minutes at least to cool down once it has cooled down I'm then going to bring in my glitter and I'm going to glitter the edges and all I've done is run around the edge with my glue stick and then I've just dipped it into some glitter so let me pop that back there like that. A little bit of excess there, so I'm going to just try and peel that off. That's the problem with, with glue, isn't it? It gets everywhere. Right. So once I've done that, I haven't glittered up this one, but I will do that afterwards. But this is going to be my centre um, piece for in my rosette. So I'm going to bring in my other four pieces, which I've already glittered. Okay, so I've already done these ones. So they've all been done together. Now, let me take that one away and let me show you how to do the top one. So I'll pop those to one side. Now, the top one, this is the way I'm going to do it, but you can do it different if you want to. It depends again on your manual dexterity. The smallest one is the most challenging one to do because it really doesn't want to go and it doesn't have quite as much um, flexibility as the larger one does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it down and I've trained this piece. I've had this piece, you know, and I've pulled it and manipulated it and I've squeezed the edges together a few times. Now I want that white pattern on the top. So what I've done is I've taken this about eight inches of ribbon and I've simply looped it, tied a knot on the end and then cut quite close to the end of that knot so that I haven't got lots of bits of ribbon on the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I want that, because I want the white on the outside, I'm going to work on the dark side. <laughs> going over to the dark side. So I'm going to manipulate it in and holding it very carefully again 
Now this is going to be my underside, that's why I'm pouring that on. So I'm going to, no, I'm not going to pour any glue in because I've run out of glue. Of course I have. Let's see. Yeah, let's pop some glue in. There we go. Let's start again. So push that down. And it goes quite easily now that I've trained it. Um, when you first have them, it, it, it is a bit of a battle, especially with this, this size. Um, so using my glue stick, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to try and catch all those edges with the glue. And once I've done that, I'm going to bring in my disc and I'm going to pop that on and hold it tight. Now I can feel the heat through it, so I'm going to be very careful and manipulate it all. There we go. Now, once it's starting to cool, which it hadn't quite, I'm going to flip it over once it starts to cool, and then I'm going to put some glue in between those folds, and then I'm going to bring in my bit of ribbon and I'm going to push that into the centre as much as I can using my pokey tool. So pushing that right in so that that is held very securely in place. If you need a little bit more glue go ahead which I'm going to just to make sure that that is fully held in place. So I've got my disc on that side and I've got my ribbon on that side. So I'm going to pop that to one side and bring back the rest. So, oops, losing my pokey tool. So now we have five, one with my ribbon on. So decide how you want it. So I want the white um, facing up on these, the, the bottom. So the two little ones, we've got a bottom, we've got a top. We've got the middle and these will be either side. So I want to do, what I want to do is to stack it so that that one, that paper's facing up with that one with the paper facing down, then that one on top and then reverse it on the bottom. Actually, that'll be the last one I put on. So I'll do the bottom first. So let's take that off. So I'm going to put some glue, plenty of hot glue on here and then just nestle it on top of that one. Try and balance it as carefully as you can so that it's straight and when you've done that one do the same with the bottom one. And what I might do afterwards actually is come back with some hot glue and put um, uh, maybe um, some bling on there, maybe a nice big stone or something. <coughs> so that's that one done. I pop that to one side and I'm going to do these two first. So put some hot glue on the bottom there. I'm going to put that on. Now when you pop it on it's going to catch all the bits that are sticking up and it might catch slightly further down as well. So just make sure you get a good layer of hot glue on there. So when that's done I'm going to flip that one over and I'm going to put a good dollop of hot glue in the middle there. Plenty so that it can catch. And I'm going to bring this one back in. And because that's already got a disc on, I'm going to just very carefully pop that on. And there we have, oh, it's still a little bit wet, so I'm going to try not to throw it about too much. And there we have have a bauble. And to finish it off, if I stand it up very carefully, to finish it off I'm going to put a bit of glue on the front there and then this is a ribbon I tied earlier. I'm just going to pop that on like that. And there we have our Christmas baubles. So <laughs> I think they're really cute. Um, I hope you like them. Let me just unplug my hot glue gun while I'm not using it. Um, yeah, I, I really like them, so I, and I hope you do too. Um, I'm going to carry on and use the rest of the card and make some more. And uh, yeah, then I've got these ready for my Christmas tree this year. 
So I hope you liked it and hope you give me a thumbs up, comment below and uh, see you next time. Bye for now.